Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Rena Malik. I'm a urologist and female pelvic surgeon. And today I'm going to react to another episode of Grey's Anatomy. This is Grey's Anatomy season five, episode 13. Again, there's another urologic condition that's being addressed during this episode, which I'm going to react to. So hopefully we'll learn a lot and have some fun and make sure if you like what you see to give me a thumbs up and also and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my other videos. Dr. Sloan. Dr. Gray. After you, Dr. Gray. Thank you, Dr. Sloan. Seriously, this never happens. People are not running into call rooms to have sex in the middle of the day when they should be working. Or really in the middle of the night either. Don't even tell me. Locked. People sleeping or... Why do I bother asking? This is ridiculous. I need sleep. That's not a good noise. That's a bad noise. That's a really bad noise. Oh my god, are you okay? No! It's bent in, in the middle. I, th I, th I think it broke it. Get Torres! Uh, go! go! This is a urologic emergency. This is most likely a penile fracture, and this is almost always occurs during intercourse when you're having kind of aggressive intercourse and the erect penis gets bent towards the pubic symphysis or the bone in the pelvis, which causes the lining of the erectile tissue to tear or break. And so it makes it look like the penis is then bent and blood can then swell up in the penis and make it look like what we call an eggplant penis, hence the eggplant emoji. Oh. Dr. Torres, thank God you're here. I, I'm headed down to the pit. I got a 911 page. Page ortho if you need anything. I, I, no, no, it was me. I, I, I paged you 911 for Dr. Sloan. He's the emergency him, himself. It's, it's on his person. But Mark's hurt? Yes. No, yes. He's badly injured in, in a bad way that it's bad for anyone who's a man. But for Dr. Sloan in particular, um, he may, he may, may have broken a, a, a bone. A bone. He broke a bone. I, I, I broke his bone. You're kidding, right? You're not kidding. It's not literally a bone. There is no bone in the penis. And this does not require an orthopedic surgeon. It requires a urologist. So let's see what happens. Your Sloan broke his goods. What? In that old call room, swear to God, I heard him screaming. With, with Doris? Maybe. But whoever it was, whoever wrote him and broke him, that's a girl I want on me. Was it Taurus? What? I mean, those two are always off and on, right? You think she's the one who broke it? How should I know? I mean, it's not my business. It's nobody's business, and it's definitely not yours. I mean, not, not, not that that I know. But if I did know who broke Mark Sloan's penis, I wouldn't even tell you because we're not even friends. I mean, I, I took out your appendix and almost ended my career. That doesn't make us close. This is a urologic emergency and really not a laughing matter. It's scary and it's not fun for the patient who's going through this. And the person who was having intercourse with the person who gets a fracture is frightened and scared and feels horrible. So talking about it and joking about it is, is really not that cool. Yeah, that's a penile fracture. Oh, I'm gonna kill myself. Well, we should operate and then you can kill yourself. Oh God. Can you do it? Him? Oh, no. He's a meatballer. He is meticulous, and he will keep his mouth shut. Mainly because I've seen you naked in a resident's bedroom. I've done operations like this before. It's not that complicated. Guys running into this problem on the battlefield, do they? I don't think you and I should talk about how guys run into this. Uh, line up an OR. We need to get in fast, or you risk permanent damage. Oh, God, no permanent damage, please. Hey. A little gray. Go away. I don't want you to see me like this. But I made you like this. I'm saying please here. Please. Uh. 
absolutely a surgical emergency. And typically it's a clinical diagnosis. You get the story from the patient. Typically they will have been having intercourse. They'll feel a pop during intercourse or hear a pop, and then they'll have significant pain and swelling of their penis. In this case, it's pretty clear, but if you're not sure for some reason, you would get an MRI of the penis to confirm that there's actually a tear in the tunica or the layer around the erectile tissue. And the treatment is surgical. So what you need to do is number one, make sure that there is no urethral injury. And so you can do that uh, either when you're in the operating room by doing a cystoscopy, using a camera to look through the urine tube to see if there's any tear, or you can get what's called a retrograde urethrogram before going to the operating room, which is where you shoot some dye into the urine tube or urethra and take an x-ray to see if dye leaks outside of the urine tube when you're taking the x-ray. I think it's absolutely right to take this guy to the operating room immediately, as soon as possible. Uh, I would envision the trauma surgeon probably could do this. However, again, normally you would get a urology who is trained and certified in doing penile surgery because you would want to ensure that number one, there's not a urethral injury and two, that the erectile tissue is cleaned and closed appropriately so that you minimize any potential damage. Uh, thanks for doing this. By the way, I know you didn't have to. Apparently I did or you were going to blackmail me to keep me quiet. <laughs> I wasn't going to actually do anything. I wasn't actually going to say anything. So just so you know, those little things that they pulled out, they're nail picks that will kind of clean under the nails because you want to make sure that your hands are completely clean and washed before you go into surgery uh, because of the sterile field. Uh, it wasn't me, by the way, with Mark, in case you were wondering. Wondering what? Who broke him? We were just friends. I mean, we also, but, but we don't really actually anymore because he got involved with somebody else. Plus, I'm a lesbian now, maybe. Sort of. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he uh, took up with somebody else. And that's cool, because I'm celibate. I cook now, which is totally great. I roasted a chicken, and I'm happy for him. that He's got somebody who can, you know, shake him and break him. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss having a backup penis. You know, just in case I'm not a lesbian. And he was my friend, too. I mean, I guess he still is, but, you know, it's never the same when somebody's off getting all into somebody new. So it's kind of like I've, I've lost both those things, you know, the penis and the friend. <sighs> I hate to lose one good thing. Never mind two. <laughs> So these are not the kind of conversations that people typically had have in the scrub sink about divulging all this really personal information right before you're about to go into surgery. A lot of people use it as time to kind of mentally prepare for the case and to think about the steps and what they're going to do or talk through the steps of the case. This is, you know, more for the drama. I heard it was this physical therapist from the rehab floor who does this fancy yoga thing where she like turns herself into a pretzel while she's on top of a guy. She quit two weeks ago. I thought it was Taurus. Well, whoever it was is going down in Seattle Grace history. Sloan is a legend. Can you imagine the kind of muscle it takes to break a man like that? I mean. <laughs> shut up. Just shut up about it. You know something. I, I know that it's nobody's business. She totally knows something. Did you see somebody come out of the room? Maybe it was her. Ooh. What? It was me, okay? Can we drop it? It was me. I do this twist and shout thing that blows most guys' minds, and I guess I twisted a little too far and almost took the whole thing off. Okay? That was really sweet of her friend to take the fall for her, although I don't know the implications of that because... Sloan's an attending and she's a resident, so that could be bad. However, despite all the political stuff, they're talking about how Sloan is a legend and this and that, but let's be honest here, no penis is immune. So really, if you're having intercourse and doing certain positions that are really bending the penis in ways that it really shouldn't be bent, it's going to happen. One of the most common positions that this happens in is reverse cowgirl. So, you know, it doesn't matter how big, how girthy, uh, how much of a legend the penis is, if you're bending that penis in ways it's not supposed to be bent, it can still fracture, so be safe. Please go away. No. Little Gray. It's not Little Gray. It's Lexi. And 
I'm sorry that I, I broke. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And I'm sorry that you're humiliated. But I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, that's sweet. So, you know, post-op stuff for this sort of surgery, uh, typically you will have some sort of constricting bandage around the penis for 24 hours that will help stop any bleeding uh, because the penis is a very vascular area. So we want to make sure it doesn't bleed. Typically no heavy lifting or strenuous activity for usually anywhere between four to six weeks. You can still have erections and normal intercourse afterwards. It's obviously a traumatic experience for everyone involved. They did the right thing by getting him taken care of right away because this is a urologic emergency. It would have been great if they had a urologist. I know that later in the seasons, there actually is a urologist in the show. So maybe at some point I'll react to some of her episodes. If you have something in particular you want me to react to, please comment below and let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to react to or what kind of things you want to see on the channel. And until next time, make sure you take care of yourself because you're worth it.